All right. So let's talk about the surprises of the season so far. And I get, I mean, the first one's got to be trading for a game breaker like McCaffrey. Now, all of the people who study this stuff, they don't really think this is a strong trade for the 49ers because of what they gave up and the fact that Christian is uh, oft injured, but also that Shanahan can kind of turn, you know, the, these these backs who aren't very uh, highly thought of in college and, you know, turn them into to big players. Um, Mostert in, is in Miami. Uh, and who, who's the guy before Mostert? The speed guy? Um, Brita. Brita, the cheetah. And, you know, you have guys like that who are not high draft picks uh, and putting them in this system and having them learn the system. They excelled. Now, with Christian, they this, this position at running back should now be on steroids because of how, how good of a player he is and out of the backfield how good of a player he is because that is what we have not had uh, in, in recent memory is just that that back out of the backfield to uh, to to make plays and to be the bailout for Jimmy. So in that standpoint, for at least for this year, and who knows what the money is going to be like next year. I let you know Parag deal with the cap. I don't understand any of it. So th- what do you think about the prognosticators who say, you know, this is really an A trade for Carolina, but more like a C trade for the 49ers. I I have definite feelings about that. One, I don't think that your ability to find and develop um undervalued players should limit should, should stop you from acquiring stud players if you can. I, I, I just think that if 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 a player like Christian McCaffrey becomes available, you should do what you can to go get him and not worry about, well, I have the ability to draft seven seventh rounders and have them be, you know, good players that that you you get a Christian McCaffrey if you can. Um, and then I often mention what Brian Windhorst says: if that if Christian McCaffrey, if we win a Super Bowl because of Christian McCaffrey, it, then it doesn't matter what we gave up to get him. It's a good trade um, because you know, is, like, is Anthony Davis going to the Lakers all over again? Yeah, I mean, you just you you do that, and then you talk about with the Rams and what they're dealing with now and their lack of depth. Well, they got a championship, so yeah, f them picks for yeah. If, <laughs> if, if you know if you know what what you don't want is to mortgage the future and then come up empty. But if if you get a trophy, then if we get six behind this, then that's fine. I'm good. Yes. I'm good with plus. Um. I think you really do have to put his injury. I, I, that it, it it makes a difference to me that he was touching the ball. He had fifty two percent of Carolina's touches. I, I don't think that that is for nothing when you start talking about his injury history. I mean, I I, I don't think you look at the guys who have that kind of usage. Like a Derrick Henry, him, you you just it's hard to hold up, and he's not even built like Derrick Henry. He's a he's a completely different type of player. So to give him that type of usage, him breaking down is not a, a shock or a surprise to me. And I don't think he'll be used that way here. I know he's twenty six, and that's you know that's up there for a running back. At the end of this contract, he'll be twenty nine. How many twenty nine year old running backs? But the thing of it is, in this system, it, it's not like he's it just going to be lining up in an I formation and running dives. I mean, you can sp- slot, put him out in the slot. You can flex him out. He's going to be. He's not going to have the normal usage of a normal RB one. I don't think, especially when you have, 
and when you talk about the ability for us to develop these other younger running backs allows you the opportunity to use Christian McCaffrey more as a football player and not as your bell cow. So I'm, I'm good with it. I, I, I think, especially for this season and with the quarterback we have, I think his skill set um, helps Jimmy a lot. I, you can, you've seen in the past two games, having him there in a position to be Jimmy's safety valve is something that um, is, you know, it is not lost on me that Jimmy, this, you know, he's had two of his better performances, you know, as a 49er in these past two weeks. And I, I don't think that the, 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 those things are, there's, I don't believe that there's not a correlation and I don't think that it's anything that happened, especially last week is unsustainable. I think, I think, Moving forward, I'm not. Am I expecting Jimmy to be that efficient for the rest of the season? No, but I think we can get some version of that every week. All right, you had uh, on on your list of surprises uh, the play of one uh, Sammy Womack Jr. Here, wow! Explain. Yeah, I mean, I had done a study last year on draft picks defensive back specifically because we had our second round pick and everybody wanted a corner so i looked into how many defensive backs i broadened it you know play my metric was 400 snaps and above a 60 um pff grade and it was like three percent it just doesn't happen for a defensive back to come in and contribute immediately in the NFL. And this dude is playing at a 70 grade and playing, he's playing starter snaps. It, it's just, it's unheard of for a fifth round defensive back to do that. And it, it's just in, and with, with E-Man going out, it's needed. We It's not like this was a luxury. We really have needed Womack to come. We, we needed his production. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, I was trying to think of a, of a Bobby Womack pun, but I couldn't forget it by the time you were finished. Uh, okay, so another one. Aaron Banks specifically and the pass pro of the interior offensive line as a big surprise. And and this is something that you are watching very closely. You send us the grades in our in our mm-hmm. group pretty much every week. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he, he had I and I don't have him in front of me, but I don't think he's given up a pressure this season, which is you know again that was you know right at the top of my list in terms of things coming into the season. Quest big question mark is you know he was basically a rookie along with Burford. He didn't play. He didn't play any snaps last year. So, yeah, for him to be um, as stout as, as he is, particularly um, in pass protection, has been a revelation. Because those guys, you know, when you look at them and you watch them, both him and Burford, um, and they are monsters in the run game. <laughs> when they get moved, they're just big dudes. And when they get to moving forward, they can just, destroy guys but you know they you know pass protection for us you know throughout camp and early in the season was a problem we were we were just getting our ass kicked um all through you know our defensive line was killing our offensive line um in the pre you know in camp and he was you know right there you know wasn't like he was like the sterling you know, Trent was, but Trent wasn't really even out there <laughs> in the um in camp. But you know, so he was getting his ass kicked along with everybody else. So for him to show up um the way he has has really been a revelation. Uh okay, so then we also have uh Hufonga, which especially in the in the early part of the season, oh, he was making s- some big plays and He's always around the football. 
And, you know, for somebody who his the one thing about him out of college was about the speed. He just is a nose for the ball. He knows where, where things are going. Uh, he may not make every play, but the fact that he's around the football, you know, means that he, he's getting there before everybody else. And, and that's that's positive. And and he was supposed to be a liability in pass coverage. He was supposed to be somebody that defenses were going to isolate and try to get him one on one with their slots and, you know, to try to pick on. But that, you know, eight games in, that has not been the case. He is not. I mean, now, I'm not saying, you know, he's not whoever, you know, he's not Rob Woodson covering guys, but, you know, he has not, he hasn't been a liability. Um, and when you couple that with the fact that he's, you know, he's, you know, uh, he's even playing that way. And then when you add to the fact that he's definitely a plus, plus, plus when you can get him playing forward and um, he's an excellent blitzer. Um, he just, he will blow up a run blitz. Um, if you, if you allow him running the alley is one of the coolest things in professional football to me <laughs> is when he gets ahead of steam and he is just coming downhill, something is getting destroyed. So I mean, him, yeah. him and Warner, like oh, on yeah. the same field together is, is really fun to watch. Yeah. Definitely. So definitely he and, and that for to him be playing at that level definitely is one of the biggest surprises of the season. And then the last one I added this just because we've been talking about this. And when when you draft a wide receiver again, this goes back to Shanahan's rep, right? Like Shanahan's rep w- w- with offense and oh, you know, he he, he saw something in Ayuk, uh, you know, I think they 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 may have drafted him uh, a, a hair above where other teams had him, and so you're like, okay, this is Kyle's guy, and Ayuk has shown really good glimpses at times, and then other times, you know, he's got two catches for 15 yards, and and it's all Debo. With Debo not really being Debo yet, Ayuk has actually stepped up, and he's got really good rhythm with Jimmy. They're connecting on, on third downs. You know, we mentioned the last game, the game against the Rams, where they were so in rhythm that he was putting it on Ayuk's hip, and Ayuk was just running without even uh, skipping a beat. He's just everything's in stride, and that's not, you know, you wouldn't say that's something that Jimmy does with a lot of receivers, right? That's not Jimmy's game. Uh, you know, that's more of like a a, a Brady thing or or whatever, but. The, the fact that those guys seem so comfortable with each other this year it is really, really cool to see. Finally, because I think we all saw sort of like, OK, when is Ayuk going to level up? And it seems like this season he's he's doing that. He is. I mean, for our offense, you know, because it's going to be tough to put up Jamar Chase, Justin Jefferson type numbers in this offense because that's you know we've all said if we're throwing it 30, 40 times a game there's something has gone terribly wrong but in our offense man he has really stepped up and he is legit 1a i th- i think at this point i feel comfortable saying that that i obviously debo i believe even with cmc debo is still our best offensive player but I think that Ayuk is more than a wide receiver, too, at this point. I, I don't know how you want to categorize it, but I, I think that he is clearly a plus player in this offense. He, he has developed to that point, and, you know, he's making himself some money this, um, this season. He, he's going to get paid. I think he's going to get paid in the offseason. He he has really stepped up. 